Hey math enthusiast, I'm here to go over the third part of section 4.2, which deals with proofs of congruent triangles. So for example eight, what we're given is a classic two column proof. I have my statements listed on the left and my reasons lifted, listed on the right. So what happens in these proofs is I'm given a certain set of information. And my goal is to prove a specific statement. So in this case, I want to prove that these two triangles, NMO and POM, are in fact congruent. So the first thing I want to do for these proofs is review my given information. So they tell me MNO is congruent to OPM. And I have that marked in my picture, these two little arcs in these corners. They tell me NMO is congruent to POM, the single little arc in these corners. Then some side lengths. NO is congruent to MP, got one tick on each of them. And then MN is congruent to OP, and then two ticks on each of them. So let's remember what our goal is here. I want to show that each of these triangles are congruent to one another. Well, that means I need to show that the third side on each of them is congruent and that the third angle on each of them is congruent. Once I have all the sides and all the angles marked, then I can prove that the triangles are congruent. So let's get down to these columns down below. The first statement that you're going to start with is your given information. So we have to be given something to start. So what I'm going to do is take all the information that they gave me here and I'm going to copy it down into my first statement. So I've completed my first statement with all my given information. I sorted it with angles on the left and sides on the right. And my first reason. So how did I know all this information? How did I know the angles were congruent? How did I know the sides were congruent? I knew it because it was given. This will always be your first statement and your first reason. The given information, the reason being that it was given. The next thing you can fill in your proof is the last statement. So I know in this case, what I'm trying to prove, my goal is to show that these two triangles are congruent. So I know that's where my proof is going to end. As soon as I can show that triangle MNO, or sorry, NMO is congruent to triangle POM, I'm done. Now I'm not positive what my reason is going to be at this point. It all depends on what statement two and three are going to be. So we have some idea as to where to get started based on what I said earlier. I need to say something about the third sides in these two triangles first. So the only sides that aren't marked are these sides down the middle, which they actually share. So in this case, my goal is to show that OM is congruent to OM or to MO, however you want to say it. Now, the reason they would be congruent is, well, obviously they're shared by both triangles. So if I were to split these triangles apart, they each would have this blue side as their third side. In this case, that reason is the reflexive property of congruence. I'm just going to use the symbol here just because I don't have a lot of space in that box. The other item I need to focus on was that the angle, this last angle that hasn't been marked yet. So the one down here and the one up here. I want to show that those two angles are congruent. Let's focus on this one that I just highlighted up top. Let's first name that angle. So I'm going to call it angle N. O is the vertex, so I'm going to put that in the middle. M is the third letter I'm going to use to name it. Should be congruent to, now I want to match this up correctly. I started with N, 
So I'm going to start with P. And now this is the angle that I'm focused on down here. So I'm going to call this angle P. M is at the vertex. O is the third point I'm going to use to finish my angle. Now the reason those angles would be congruent, I pretty much already stated it right here. Those are the last angles that I haven't marked yet in my picture. So what I'm using now is the third angles theorem. So I'm almost done my proof. I've made it to my final statement where I have to prove the two triangles are congruent. Now in this case, I've shown all three sides and all three angles are congruent. Well, the figures must be congruent because that is my definition of a congruent figure. So my final reason is going to be definition of congruent, I'm just going to use the symbol again just to save some space, figures or you could say congruent triangles if you want to. Now I am done my proof. I've given specific statements to help lead me to my final statement and all my reasons are valid. Those two sides were congruent because they were the same side. I'm using reflexive property. Those two angles were congruent because they were the third angles in each of the triangles. And then the triangles had to be congruent because that's my definition for congruent figures. So for my next proof, looks a little different. What I'm given is we have a couple angles that are congruent. That's already marked in my picture. Q is congruent to R. I have P, which is the midpoint on segment QR. And then we have a couple sides that are congruent. So I have NQ congruent to SR. So they have two ticks there. And then I have NP congruent to SP. So once again, let's think about what our goal is. What I want to do is prove the two triangles are congruent. In order to do that, I'm going to need to show that all the parts are congruent. So right now, I'm going to need two more angles to show that are congruent and I'm going to need one side to show that it's congruent. So now let's get to our two columns. So let's start with our statements. I know statement number one is going to be all of the given information. Okay, so I've squeezed in all my information, given information, into that first statement. The next thing I want to fill in is my last statement. Now they gave me a lot of spaces here. It goes all the way from one to seven. I'm going to write this down in seven. It might end up being a little bit higher because I might skip a few spaces. All right, but I at least want to put it down just so I know this is my goal. My plan is to end up here to show that the two triangles are congruent. Okay. And the last thing I can fill in before I get started is my first reason. I know all this information because it was given to me. It's the given information. So now I know what I need to do. I need to show that two other angles and one other side are congruent. So if you're stuck, remember to look at the given information. A lot of it was straightforward. We had a pair of angles that are congruent, a couple of pairs of sides that were congruent, but then they gave me this piece right here. P is the midpoint on segment QR. So P right here in the middle is the midpoint on segment QR. Well, if P is a midpoint, that means it's directly in the middle of that segment, which means that QP must be congruent to RP. Okay, so now I've marked something else in my picture. I want to include that into my statements. So let's write down exactly what I said. QP is congruent to RP. Now the question is, how did I know that? Well, the given information helped me deduce that. This specifically, 
All right, P was the midpoint of QR. So the reason I knew those two segments were congruent was because the definition of midpoint. That's how I knew it. P was the midpoint, so that told me that the two segments were congruent. Okay, so I've got down my one side. All the sides are marked. So actually, let me go back, let me add three ticks to this instead of the two, because I already have one side with two ticks. Now I want to focus on the angles. Well, as soon as I'm down to one angle left, I know I can use the third angles theorem. But right now, I need two angles. So there's two angles in here that haven't been marked. I can obviously tell the ones that are going to go together. So this angle up top where N is, is going to match up with this one where S is. And then I have these angles in the middle right around point P. So let's focus on them real quick. I know they must be congruent in order for my triangles to be congruent. Well, if you notice these two, when I trace them, these two angles in the middle should look familiar. All right, that's one of the pairs that we've discussed before. All right, those two are actually vertical angles that I've marked in green. So now I want to name those angles specifically. I can't just say angle P. I have to be more specific than that. So for the angle on the left, I'm going to call it QPN. I'm going to use those three letters. Q, P is the vertex, so it's in the middle, followed by N. Is congruent to, now I started with Q, so I'm going to match that up. It looks like Q matches up to R up top. So I'm going to start with R. Now this goes down to P. P is the vertex, so that's going to be in the middle. And then obviously the last point that makes that up is S. And I pretty much already stated the reason. I know those two angles have to be congruent because they're vertical angles. All right, so what I'm going to put down is the vertical angles. Now sometimes it's called the vertical angles congruence theorem. Sometimes it's just called the vertical angles theorem. Alright, so it's up to you. Alright, so sometimes as I said it's called the vertical angles congruence theorem. Sometimes it's just called the vertical angles theorem. In this case what I'm saying is they're vertical angles. That's why they're congruent. Okay, so one angle down, one left. So the last angle I have to mark would be up here and down here. As I said, when I only have one angle left, I know they must be congruent because of the third angle's theorem. So for number four, I'm going to list out those angles. Now, in this case, there's no other angle coming from this vertex. So I don't need to name it with three letters. I can just use one. Angle N congruent to angle S. How did I know that? I stated it earlier. I'm using the third angles theorem. Okay. Now I've labeled all the angles. I've labeled all the sides. In this case, these triangles have to be congruent because all the corresponding parts are congruent. So now I can actually jump down to my last step, number seven. And the reason my triangles are congruent is the same reason I used to finish up the last proof. All right, it is the definition of congruent triangles or of congruent figures. So now you might be asking yourself, well, why the extra spaces? We didn't put anything in for five or six. Okay, so what you could have done is you could have actually broken up the given information. I could have written that down in one, two, and three, which would have slid everything down. Then I would have actually used up line five and line six. All right, in this case, we squeezed all the given information just into statement one, so I really didn't need five or six.
So in this case, I didn't use those two. I'm just going to cross them out. I was still able to prove what I needed to prove without filling out five and six.